Uh, good morning. I want to welcome you out to church today at Springfield First Baptist Church, July the 5th, 2020. We've got a few we've mentioned for prayer this morning, the, the Hoover shooting situation at the Galleria. Let's remember those victims and uh, in that situation. Uh, Samantha Elam's uh, brother-in-law, Kenny, uh, he's at least got a couple more days in the hospital. Continue to remember him. Uh, Eddie Holloway, is, uh, we continue to pray for his lungs, that he can have this uh, surgery on his stomach. Uh, Glendora is not feeling well this morning, and uh, she, she's at home. And uh, continue to pray for her, and uh, as they come, doing uh, therapy on her, getting her used to walking again. Uh, Lincoln Crowden continues to be in Huntsville Hospital. Let's continue to pray for him. Paisley Davenport seems to be doing well with her kidney transplant. But, uh, let's uh, continue to remember her. Uh, nursing home, the nursing home residents, uh, a lot of them are, as we just got through talking about, are used to not having any visitors, but there's several that was used to having visitors that can't have any. And uh, so let's, let's pray for not only the residents, but also those that go in and out the doors attending to those residents. Our country, uh, probably each one of us knows uh, what's going on in our country these days, but I'm just going to be out on the line with this. There still is no better place to be than in the United States of America. James, as you said a while ago, 244 years of freedom. And uh, I, I can't think of anywhere else I'd want to be unless it's heaven, of course. But uh, as far as on this earth, the United States of America is tops, uh, still is. And, uh, but there's lots of things going on that uh, folks need a touch from God. And uh, so let's continue to pray for our country, our leaders, the election coming up. Continue to remember our church, that we'd always be doing the things that are pleasing in the Lord's sight. And uh, remember Wednesday evening, we're going to continue our study on uh, the spiritual fingerprints of the visible church. And this Wednesday night, we'll be looking at that they continued, the early church continued steadfastly in fellowship. And uh, so let's uh, keep that in mind. We'll be back online tonight, uh, having services tonight at uh, 6 o'clock. Also be back online and having services here Wednesday night at 7. And again, Wednesday night, we'll be back in Acts 2 and verse 42. Uh, right now, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer, and then we'll get started on the, with the sermon this morning. Heavenly Father, uh, Lord, I thank you, Lord, today for your many blessings. Thank you for the opportunity we have to gather together this morning. Thank you for the technology we have that uh, can reach out and, and allow people to be gathered with us from home. And, Lord, we've mentioned several this morning, Lord, that uh, stand in need of your touch. Uh, Lord, we, we thank you for meeting each and every need that we've mentioned this morning. And, Lord, uh, just uh, be with our country, be with our leaders as they make decisions that affect us not only today but in the days to come. And, Lord, uh, I just ask you to uh, be with the election, Lord, this year, that uh, each one of us would uh, take the time to do exercise uh, a right that we have as a citizen of the United States, everyone that's 18 years old and older, has a right to cast their vote. And Lord, may we seek your face to see who we need to vote for. And Lord, uh, be with our church. Lord, that we'd always be the shining light that we need to be in this community. And uh, Lord, I thank you for all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, this, this week I've read, and as soon as I read some information that... Uh, I'm not going to use this morning. I, I knew exactly uh, who they were talking about, so I'm not going to use that information. We could talk about uh, some draft picks that have happened in the past, but we ain't going to do that because that would uh, 
Some of you would know exactly, like me, know exactly who we're talking about, and then the others could go ask Mr. Google who who was Marty talking about, and maybe Google would spit that information out. So we're not going to talk about that. Instead, let's talk about this right here. A soul is saved and begins growing in faith, becomes a practicing saint, producing fruit, and praising the Lord. A second soul is saved. Instead of becoming a practicing saint, instead of producing fruit, instead of praising the Lord, they slip away, never to be heard from again. The only place, we're going to look this morning to the only place that has the word backslider in it. Now, throughout the Bible, the idea of a backslider can be found here and there. But there's only one place in the King James Version where the word backslider is located. Now I want you to think about this this morning. Again, we, we're not going to call any names, but let's say that we were writing for a boxing magazine. And our job was to go interview two boxers. And we're just giving the names. One of them kind of familiar to us. Maybe the other one not so much familiar to us. The f first boxer we interview has a lifetime record of 22 wins, five losses. So we could wrap our mind around what exactly we could write about that boxer. The second boxer we go to interview has a record of five wins, 22 losses. Let's think about what we might write about this individual. Because you see, in any church service, whether the pews be packed or they not be packed. We could be sitting in the midst of somebody who's joyful for wins they have in their life. While at the same time, in the same building, somebody be pouting about the losses in their life. Let's look this morning to Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 14. Proverbs chapter 14, verse number 14. King James Version, the Bible says this, the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. I want to read to you what the Amplified Version says. The backslider in heart no, from God and from fearing God shall be filled with the fruit of his own ways. And a good man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his ways with the holy thoughts and actions which his heart prompts and in which he delights. So 
Proverbs 14 and verse 14 is the only time in the Bible that we have the actual word backslider. But in other places, it uh, teaches about backsliding. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. Dr. H.A. Ironside, who at one time was, I think, was a pastor of the Moody Church, said this. And this is something for us to think about. Because some of us already thought, well, I ain't. Some of us have thought, well, I, maybe I used to be. Some of us might be thinking, I am. Some of us might be thinking, I possibly am. And there's others that saying, I'll never be a backslider. Here's what Dr. Ironside said. If you were ever closer to the Lord than you are right now, You're backslidden. Let me read that again. If you were ever closer to the Lord than you are right now, then right now, you're backslidden. That's his definition of being in a backslidden condition. What words translated backslider there? You might want to know. Well, it's a word. It's, uh, I, I think I've got it. Sug. S U G is its spelling, and S O O G is its pronunciation. Some words might be backslider, drive, go back, turn away, back. It, it's a primitive root, properly to flinch, by implication to go back. Literally to retreat or figuratively to apostatize. In other words, to leave what was once believed. Backslider. One writer says there's several identifiers to somebody in a backslidden condition. There's been a loss of heavenly values. You say, well, what happens when heavenly values are lost? Well, let's talk about a few other things that could be. When the excitement of the Bible truth about the things of God grows weak, but the things of the world get stronger, grabbing our interest, grabbing our time up, the Bible gets dull, our prayer life is unremarkable, our church attendance does not have a pull. Now, we might have to add a little asterisk there, but we'll, we'll get that in there. What time did he say he'd be on today? Well, uh, let's not watch it live, let's, let's watch it after it. Matter of fact, let's, let's just wait till next week. We can catch up by next week. They having church today? I don't know. Maybe they are. Living in that condition is a hard way to go. A second way that we can be in a backslidden condition is a loss of conviction of sin. I remember taking Amy out to eat at a restaurant. Uh, Amy, I believe it was the night of your junior, senior prom back in 1988, if I remember correctly. She'd never been there. I'd never been there. And Jimmy, it looked like they hadn't paid their light bill. They had them lights on whatever setting it was. It was on the dimmest 
couldn't hardly read. Now, we've been to other places since then that have been kind of similar, but we couldn't hardly read what was on the menu. But you know, the longer we sat there, nobody adjusted the lights. But the longer we sat there, the brighter that it got. Y'all ever been in that situation? Dimly lit, lit room. Nobody touches the lights, but after a while, it don't look as dark as what it once was. You say the closer in sin we get, the less we see wrong with it. John chapter 3 explains it this way, that we need to be coming to the light, not running from it. Lazy in service. I've told most of y'all in here are going to know what I'm fixing to say because you've already heard it. I've gave Amy instructions about my tombstone. No pictures. Now, could you imagine somebody walking through a cemetery and seeing a picture of me looking like this? The cemetery at times is bad enough, but to come through, they're mostly smiling. So I've asked for no pictures. And if anything besides name, birth date, and date of death is on there. I wouldn't mind having what Jesus said about Mary on the tombstone. And maybe, since lack of space, maybe they could put it for both of us. They did what they could. Because what a testimony that is for her. She did what she could. Here's some more I don't want. Here rest Marty Mosley. That's all he ever did. Here's another one I don't want. Here lies a man who did no good, had many chances, but he never would. Where he's gone and how he fares, nobody knows, nobody cares. Lazy in service is another way to know that we're in a backslidden condition. Another way is when we put people's word, maybe their ideas, ahead of God's word. God's word somewhere back on the back burner. And we want to know what man has got to say about something. Could be this, could be that. But there are some who are persuaded more by the opinion and, by, and advice of others than plain, clear Bible teaching. Shame on us for putting the Bible, God's Word, on the back burner. Now I've had people to say in my presence that the Bible's gray about certain areas. I ain't never had them tell me what gray areas they're talking about. Because there's so much black and white that the Bible's about. Let's dig into God's Word and find out what God's Word says. Last one we're going to talk about, backslidden condition, is a loss of testimony. Here's why one guy describes testimony. I'm still trying to wrap my mind around it totally, but I think I get what he's talking about. Man's Christian character is like a tree. His testimony as its shadow.
It all depends upon our relationship to the Son. S-O-N. The lighter we get in the day, the longer that tree shadow is going to be. The lighter we get in life, the greater our testimony ought to be. It ought not be. Son's about to say it. And my, 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 where's our testimony at? Where's our testimony at? If you look back to verse 10 of Proverbs chapter 14, King James Version says this, The heart knoweth his own bitterness. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. And a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. Now, we as church folks, we ought to take that last part of that verse to heart. I want to remind you about some things we talked about in the past week. When one of us is rejoicing, if the rest of us are where we need to be, what are we going to be doing? We're going to be rejoicing along with them. If one of us is grieving and sorrowful, what's the rest of us need to be doing? Well, if we're where we need to be as a church, we're going to be sharing in that grief. We're going to be sharing in that sorrow. The English Standard Version puts it this way. The heart knows its own bitterness and no stranger shares its joy. Now I'm just going to go out on a limb and say this. The church ought to be sharing in it. The church ought to be, When there's joy present in the church, I ain't talking about the building. I'm talking about the church. Every member ought to be joyous. Now look down to verse 12. Proverbs 14, verse 12. Now, we've talked about this verse in the past because on uh, most times when we look at it, I tell half the church turned to Proverbs 14, 12, and the other half turned to Proverbs 16, 25. Both of them say the same thing. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death I learned a long time ago hopefully I'm not guilty of this anymore probably in the past I have been guilty of this I've heard a lot of people say, if I was only, you fill in the blank. I'd be, you fill in the blank. Something happens to somebody's family, all too often we think, well, if I was them, I'd, would we? I'm going to remind you, oh, but by the grace of God, we're not in that situation. Oh, but by the grace of God, go we.
Let's think about the backslider for just a minute again. The backslider in heart. Won't you turn over with me to Jeremiah chapter number 17, verses 9 and 10. Jeremiah 17, verses 9 and 10. The backslider in heart. In his heart, he'd gone back. In his heart, no longer do the things of God mean what they need to mean. No longer does the things of God mean what they once did. You see, some people have an idea about a backslider. Some people believe, might think that a backslider loses their salvation. There's others that believe that, oh, they're etern eternally secure, the relationship is settled, but they've lost the joy of their fellowship. And then there's another group that say that backslider would never say begin with. I'm going to let you decide which group you belong in. There may be a fourth or fifth group. Jeremiah 17, verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things. Now, ain't that lovely? Paints a Man, what a picture that paints. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Verse 10. I, the Lord, search the heart. All David said, Lord, you search me. Search me and know me. Search me and know my heart. Search me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. And lead me in the way everlasting. In Psalm 139. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Now, I'm of the opinion that if you look up what in the world he's talking about right there, the reins, he's talking about the kidneys. You find out how healthy your kidneys are, you find out how healthy you are. You have, find out how bad off your kidneys are, you'll find out how bad off you are. I try the reins, even to, get, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his wages. Turn over with me to Ephesians chapter 3. Verses 16 and 17. Verse 16. This is what he desires to happen in our life. Now, uh, I want to ask you, somebody in a backslidden condition, one writer says this can't be going on in their life. Take you back to several years ago, I told a story about Jimmy inviting us over. Telling us that he gave Mosley's, well, y'all come on in. You, what's mine, yours? You have full run of my house. And then he locks us up in a closet. What would we think about in a situation like that? Well, he's invited us in to have a full run. Then he's locked us up in this closet. We can't move much in here. There ain't too much room for us. We can't do this. We can't do that. All too often, that's what we do to the Lord. We invite him in. Lock him up. And in essence, do this. Lord, we'll, we'll call on you when we need you. Lord, we'll let you have control when we want to let you have control. He needs to be the pilot, the captain. 
the driver. Verse 16, Ephesians chapter 3. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the Spirit in the inner man. Somebody that's backslidden is not right there. They've turned away. Verse 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. Now, where did it say there that he might be locked up somewhere? Until a convenient time. It doesn't say that. That he might dwell in your hearts by faith. That ye being rooted and grounded in love. Verse 18 says, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, length, depth, height, and to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Adam Clark says this, who is the backslider? The backslider is the one who once walked in the ways of religion but has withdrawn, withdrawn from them. The backslider is a man who once fought manfully against the world, the devil, and the flesh but has now retreated from the battle. Who is the backslider? The man who once belonged to the congregation of the saints, but now has been removed from them. Who is he that is a backslider in heart? It's not he who was surprised and overcome by the power of temptation and the weakness of his own heart, but he who drinks down iniquity with greediness. Who gives cheerful way to the bent of his own nature, and now delights in fulfilling the lust of his flesh and of the mind, who loves sin as before he loved godliness. The back slider in heart will be filled. If you'll turn back to Proverbs. 14 with me. The black slider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. There's a fellow by the name of Dr. Cameron Alexander who declares that a person in this shape is one where nobody knows what's best except him. Friends, if we ever find ourselves in that shape, if we're in that shape today, that nobody else knows anything but me. Nobody else knows what's good for me but me. I want to point you back to God. Because without Him, we can't be good. Without Him, we're not good. Without Him, our righteousness is as filthy rags. But with him, we're justified. With him, we're sanctified. With him, we're waiting to the day that we be glorified and live with him forever. Adam Clark says, what, is, what are his own ways? Folly. Sin, disappointment, and death. What is implied by being filled with his own ways, having his soul saturated with those things, with folly, with sin, disappointment, and at last ending in death. Because we read it in verse 12. There's a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. Oh, that we'd be dwelling in God's ways. That we'd be striving for God's ways. That we'd put aside self. Most of us, I ain't going to throw all of us under the bus. Most of us. If it ain't the top verse, it's got to be in the top two. When we think about the, 
the words found we find in Proverbs, most of us in the top two, some of us might have the, the woman of, my, of Proverbs 31 at top. But I think right below that is Proverbs chapter 3. According to who we're talking to, one or two. I, I believe that, most of us. Look over there to Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 5 and 6. I want to remind you while, you while you begin looking at the verses 5 and 6. There's a way that seemeth right to the man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. The backslid, backslider in heart shall be filled with his own way. Trust in the Lord, not in self. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct thy paths. If you've got a different translation of the Bible, it probably says this, that last phrase. And he shall make your path straight. Amen. If we'd get off of self and back on God. Get off of self and get on to God. Could be somebody listening this morning who's never been on God. God's never been in them. What are you waiting on? As he knocks upon your heart's door, let him in. Let him in. He wants to have fellowship with you. Let's look back to Proverbs 14, verse 14. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways, and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. I want to remind you about something I just said kind of in passing just a few minutes ago. One of my professors asked us to take out a sheet of paper one day and write down what it took to be a good man. And those of you that remember this story, Knows this. He didn't like my answer. The only way we can be good is to have Jesus Christ living within us. He didn't like that. Didn't care for it. Maybe this morning there's somebody listening and somebody here may not like that. But as we said a while ago, our righteousness, the best that we have is filthy rag before him. There's no one good, no, no not one. So when it says in the Bible, a good man... I believe this is talking about somebody that's got God in their life. He's number one in their life. Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior. That's the only way we can be good. I ain't talking about a good old boy. I'm talking about a good man, a good woman. One writer says the Hebrew construction says that God has an indwelling, invisible presence of the essence of all good underneath his own skin. 
And this man does not have to travel from place to place trying to find different ways to, uh, looking for different ways to find life and in the process end up destroying himself because God's in the house. Who is a good man? The man whose heart is right with God. Not the backslider. Not the lost man. The man who is everything that the sinner and backslider are not. God's done moved in. God has done moved in. If you look over with me to John chapter 14, verse number 23. John 14, verse number Judas, this not, not talking about Judas Iscariot, had asked him, Lord, how will you manifest yourself to the world? Here's Jesus' answer. John 14, verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he'll keep my words. Now, he didn't say if a man love me, he'll turn his back on me. If a man love me, he'll do whatever he wants to do. No, but if a man love me, he will keep my words. I want to ask you something. I'm going to go back just a little bit before we finish this verse. How are we going to keep what we don't know? I don't believe you can. If a man love me, he will keep my words. And look at the rest of this. My father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. So that we can say, 1 John 3, 24, we know that we're his by the spirit that he gives us. Because he's done came up, came, done set up house with us. We are the temple of the Holy Ghost. If we find ourselves headed down a backslidden way, we're going to turn about and turn back to God. If we find ourselves living in a backslidden way, we're not not going that way. We done got there. We're going to turn back to God. If we find ourselves lost and the Lord knocks upon our heart door, we're going to answer with the faith that he gives us. One hymn writer put it this way, Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. In my heart. In my heart. Lord, I want to be a Christian in my heart. The backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways and a good man shall be satisfied from himself. We're going to be satisfied with God. Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for your many blessings. Thank you for allowing us to be gathered as we are today. Thank you for your word. And Lord, no matter where we find ourselves today, 
you know where we're at. No matter what picture we try to paint to those around us, Lord, you see behind that paint and you know all about us. Lord, you know who you've saved. You know who is on the way to heaven. You know the lost. Who your word says, you're not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. And Lord, you know your own who are in a backslidden condition. You know all about us. Lord, may we be going on your road, headed your way with you as the captain of our ship. For backslidden, May we turn about to you. For lost, may we come to you for salvation. And may we always, always be about your business as one of your children. You have your way in each one of our lives today. We thank in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we thank the folks from Facebook tuning in. Hope you'll be tuned in again tonight. And uh, we'll be back on about 6 o'clock this evening.